by popular demand, I bring you my red velvet cake. So good, such a classic, and because I'm a little extra, of course there's a whole buttercream rose situation on top. But you don't have to do that to make a delicious cake. If you like my videos, hit that like button. Let's get started. I'm adding half a cup of unsalted butter at room temperature into my standing mixer fitted with a paddle attachment. We're gonna cream it. My butter is nice and mixed, so now it's time to cream one and a half cups of granulated sugar right into there. Once your butter and sugar are creamed, we're gonna add two eggs in one at a time. Just make sure the first egg is mixed before you add the second one in. Always scrape the bowl too. My eggs are nice and incorporated and I wanna show you the batter before I add the vanilla in. Look how pretty that is. Add our tablespoon of vanilla extract in. Now it's time to sift our dry ingredients together. So I'm gonna add in two and a half cups of flour. And I'm using cake flour, but all purpose is fine too. Teaspoon of baking soda. Teaspoon of kosher salt. All right, let's sift. Give it a quick whisk. I'm sifting two tablespoons of cocoa powder into my butter mixture right now. And just make sure you don't use Dutch processed cocoa because it's less acidic and it basically won't react with the buttermilk. In theory, in a traditional old school red velvet cake, your cocoa powder will react with your buttermilk and the vinegar and have um, a pale chocolate pinkish reddish color, hence red velvet. I think in the 40s this got changed up and people just poured red food coloring in to make it technicolor. Reattaching the paddle attachment. There's my tea towel. Oh, fine. It's fine. Okay, let's scrape that bowl down. It's a mess inside of there. Don't look. So before I pull this batter together, I want to show you something. I actually don't like using food coloring that much. Like a little bit's okay, but a lot of it kind of scares me. It's just a lot of dye you're putting into something. So I made this recipe and I didn't use it. I used a beet puree, so pretty, so natural. You can take a look and see the batter. It was beautiful, natural pink coloring, and you should have had the reaction with the cocoa powder and the butter uh, milk with the, the vinegar, and it would have made this nice soft pink color and been accentuated by the beets. But let me show you how it turned out. This is the finished cake, which I'm not using in the final video but perfectly flat, beautiful layers. I ate a little sample piece. It was delicious, but it's totally like a caramel color. The red faded away completely. So I'll figure out how to use this, but for you, I'm making a version with the food coloring. If you just want a beautiful light chocolate cake with cream cheese frosting, go ahead, skip the food dye like I did in this version, and then take out a quarter cup of the uh, buttermilk and add in a third of a cup of steamed beets that you've pureed. I'm going to be mixing in half of the dry mixture, half of my red buttermilk mixture. I'm going to add a tablespoon of vinegar into the buttermilk and then mix the rest in. Adding in about a quarter teaspoon of powdered food coloring straight into the buttermilk, giving it a whisk and I'm going to take a look and see if it's the right color. Now we're gonna mix in a tablespoon of vinegar into our buttermilk. Give it a whisk. Get the rest in. Scrape the bowl down. Right now you can see the acids in the uh, buttermilk and the vinegar reacting with the baking powder. It's really bubbly. I'm going to prepare my three six inch pans by buttering and flouring them with cocoa powder. Kick it around. Now let's transfer that batter in. Now I'm gonna add my cake strips onto the exterior of the pan. It's going into the oven at 350 Fahrenheit for about 25 to 30 minutes. All right, my cakes are out of the oven. 
cooled for five minutes and we're gonna invert them and see how they look. That's actually good. There's cocoa powder on the outside so it looks darker than it is. And they smell great. All right, nice flat layers. They're reddish, very red on the inside and soft. My cakes are cooling and now it's time to start my frosting. I love a cream cheese frosting, but I don't get to make it enough because it doesn't give you a really beautiful clean edge. It makes it very difficult to get that. So for my more fussy cakes, it doesn't really work. I love it on a sheet cake or a more rustic cake like today's will be. All right, three sticks of unsalted butter at room temperature into a standing mixer fitted with a paddle attachment. We'll be creaming that, but first I'm gonna sift a pound and a half of confectioner sugar out. Perfect, a pound and a half and there's no mess. All right, now we're gonna cream our butter. Then we'll be adding in our confectioner sugar and our cream cheese. Butter is creamed and now we're gonna add in two packages or 16 ounces of room temperature cream cheese. Add in one teaspoon of vanilla, pinch of salt, all right, my butter and cream cheese are all creamy and creamed, so now I'm gonna start bucketing in my confectioner sugar. It looks like a lot, and it is a lot, but it's also really fluffed up from the sifting. Cover with a tea towel, which I will hold onto so it doesn't fall into the bowl. Mmm, that looks really good. More sugar. So this is totally delicious. However, I've been reminded that I'm baking a layer cake, so it's probably just going to like all squeeze out of the middle. I'm going to add in the other half pound of sugar, which is a lot, but it's just so gooey. If you want, you can make a red velvet sheet cake with this recipe, leave this as is, and it's totally fine. But if you're building a layer cake, you need to structure it. I reserved just enough batter to make one cupcake, which I'm gonna to use to make the crumble for the cake. The best way to get a nice uniform crumb for your red velvet cake is to use a cheese grater, believe it or not. I'm gonna try doing a classic rose with a 127 tip for my first flour. Smear a bit of buttercream onto your work surface, pat on your square of parchment paper, and let's get started. Taking some of my thick buttercream, I'm gonna place it on there and make a little mound out of it. So I'm using my 127 tip, and I'm gonna make a little spiral to start off with. Once your spiral's complete, you can start making little arcs that will overlap. There we go. That's a perfectly nice flower, and when we finish, we'll be using our scissors to cut the flower off and place it onto the cake. Pipe the cream cheese frosting onto the first layer. Add the next cake layer on. Repeat the process twice. Cover the cake completely in cream cheese frosting and give it a nice smooth. Use an offset spatula for the top and a bench scraper for the side. To smooth the corner of the cake, use your offset spatula and pull in while you turn. Make sure to clean your tool off in between each swipe. Gently add your red velvet crumbs onto the cake's exterior, starting at the bottom and moving your way up. Cover completely, sprinkle over the top, and pat down any crumbs that are flying away. Transfer your chilled buttercream roses onto the cake, and then pipe some leaves in the gaps. A moist, light chocolate cake, cream cheese frosting, and buttercream roses? What could go wrong? Basically nothing because this is a really good cake. Okay, thanks so much for watching. I really hope you get to make this recipe and don't forget to subscribe.